Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm really excited about this video. We'll be continuing our exploration about how to speed up your code in various different circumstances. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to speed it up if you're dealing with table data. Um, we'll be looking at an example in Python pretty soon using the very popular Python library called Pandas. Um, Pandas, if you're not familiar, it's okay. But uh, Pandas basically is used to deal with data frames. So imagine if you have like an Excel spreadsheet, you can read that into Pandas and do crazy different operations on Pandas using Python. I want to make a whole Pandas video series at some point, but suffice for now, we're just going to look at if you do have a data frame or a table of numbers or data in Python, how are you going to speed up certain operations on that data set? So to uh, look at our motivating example, let's say we have a very simple data frame. It has only two columns, the name of a student and the major at the university. So we see that we have Vader, who's a stats major, Mickey is a stats major, and we have all these different students. I've just written five of them here, but imagine that like a true university, you might have thousands or 10,000 students um, at that university. And you have a bunch of more columns about them, like their GPA, uh, how many units they've taken. So you have a very massive data frame. So let's say that an operation that you do really often for some reason is you're going to be given the name of a student or a collection of names of students and you want to get back the student's major or the majors of all of the students whose names you have. And that's something you do all the time. So you care about that operation and that operation again being give me the name and then I want the major back. Um, you want that operation to be as fast as possible, okay? Let's look at two different situations about how you might go about it and why one situation will be giving you a better performance than the other. So let's say your data frame first in the first situation is pretty simple, it's just name and major. So there's nothing special about it right now. Um, if I'm given the name of a student, let's say I'm given the name of the student Yoda. So if someone gives me the name Yoda and I have to look up what major they are, uh, it is something like a linear search. So I'm gonna have to say, Okay, go through all of the rows in my data frame until you find the name Yoda, and eventually you'll find the name Yoda. Once you find the name Yoda, go ahead and give me the major of Yoda, which is computer science. So it's gonna be about linear time, and we can say that if the number of students doubles, it's gonna take me on average twice as long. Um, if it is times four, it's gonna take me times four as long on average to find this information. Um, Maybe this is good, it, it seems like it could be problematic if I have a very big university and I'm doing this operation really often, it might be very time consuming and expensive in the long run. So that's option one, this kind of linear type search. Option two uses something called a database or table um, index. So a table index, um, if you're not familiar with it, is basically uh, you can set an index as pretty much any column or sometimes collection of columns if we're getting more complicated, but just to keep it simple for now, you can set any one of the columns in your data frame to be something called an index. Now, what that means uh, at a very high level is that if you're looking up things based on the index, so let's say I set name as my index. So I'm gonna write in big red letters, this is now our index. So what the data frame or what the table is doing behind the scenes, once you declare this as your index, is it's saying that, okay, I'm gonna make lookups really, really, really fast if I know what the index of any given row is. So that means if I know that Yoda, is, if I know that the student I'm looking for is Yoda and the name is my index, I can make finding the major or any other information about Yoda really fast, almost constant time. And some of you might be thinking, how is this possible? How did I go from linear time to constant time? Well, if you're familiar with uh, dictionaries or hash maps, as they're sometimes called hash tables in other programming languages, um, we know that hash tables or dictionaries or hash maps are constant time. And to go into that whole discussion would be maybe outside the scope of this video. But basically they make looking something up, given a key, you can get a value really, really, really easily. And that's the same sort of ideas that indexing is sometimes using. So basically it's making this operation of taking a name or a set of names and finding the major or majors of those students really, really optimized, really, really, really fast. And now you're probably thinking, okay, well, that can't be free, right? There's got to be some kind of trade-off to all this. And you're exactly correct. It's a good thing to think like that in computer science because nothing comes for free. You're always giving something up. And in this case, 
what we're giving up is that when we declare the name as our index, we're kind of putting a lot of overhead on this table. We're saying that, okay, now you have to manage all the names. You have to make sure that they're stored in a very particular way. Um, and what becomes slower is updating or inserting a new entry into the table. So if I'm inserting a new student into this table, it has to kind of remap the indices, make sure everything is stored properly. I'm talking on a very high level, I know, but without getting into the nitty gritty, that's what becomes slower. Or if I'm updating a given row, if I'm updating someone's name, that has to also go through the management of the index and make sure everything is remapped properly. So uh, in a nutshell, I'm getting really, really fast performance on looking up a student by name compared to my previous method, but I'm suffering if I need to update or uh, insert a new student. But as we said, if we're mostly looking up, let's say the school year has already begun and we're not getting like that many new students during the school year, we're not updating that much information, usually we're just looking up existing students, then this could be a really good strategy. Um, so that when we do get a new batch of students, like over the summer or in the fall, we can just kind of incur that cost up front rather than um, incurring the cost of looking up a student throughout the entire year. So um, at a very high level, that's how database indexing can help us speed up our code. Um, and I think it'll be more clear once we take a look at the code in Python. So let's do that now. All right, so let's take a code look at how we can use indexing on tables or data frames or databases or whatever you want to call it uh, in order to sometimes get a speed up on our code. So the first thing we'll do here is import some stuff. We'll import the pandas library, which as we said is used to deal with data frames in Python uh, and some stuff from the random library. We're going to first create a rather big data frame. We'll be using some data about students as our test. So we have stuff about their majors, which year they're in, we're going to generate some random names on the fly. Um, and we generate these names so that there's no um, stu two students with the same name, so our indexing works out. We generate some random GPAs, some random majors, some random years. We have this function called generate data frame because we're going to be changing the index of this data frame often through this file. So we want to be able to revert back to the original data frame whenever we need to. So we'll call the function and generate our data frame. And We'll call this .head10 to get a look at what our data frame looks like. So here's the first 10 rows of our data frame whose overall size is 100,000 rows. So we see the students have some random names, some random GPAs, some random majors, and some random years. So our goal, let's say, um, if you're some kind of administrator at a university, let's say the thing you're doing most often is looking up a student by name. So you have the name of the student and you want to get all the other information about them, their GPA, their major, their year. So if you don't have any index on this data frame, so notice the index of this data frame is just numbers. It's 0, 1, 2, nothing fancy. So if you don't have any kind of logical index on this data frame, let's see how you would get a student given their name. So we have this block here, which is going to just run this. When you put this time it, it's a really nice feature of Jupyter Notebook. It basically just runs this code block a bunch of times and gives you the average amount of time it took. It's really something you should use when it's a quick code block, like something that's running in milliseconds or microseconds. It'll give you a nice average. If it's something that takes more like on the order of five to 10 seconds, you might wanna just use the time library. So because I'm expecting this to be quick, I have the code block just give me a random names from all the names of all the students in this data frame. And then I do take the data frame, give me only the row in the data frame where the name of the student is equal to the chosen name. So for example, if the chosen name was this guy, B, J, Q, whatever, then I would say, give me only the row in the data frame where the name is equal to that B, J, Q. So it'll just give me the single row. Now from that single row, give me the major of the student. So at that point, it'll be computer science. Um, it'll really be a list, which is one element, which is computer science. So I have to do one last thing, which is iloc zero, which is give me the element of that list, which is at index zero, which is, of course, computer science. So that's how I would take a given name and get that student's major if I don't have any logical indexing on the data frame. And I did that. It did 100 loops, and it has about 12 milliseconds per loop. So I guess that's pretty fast. But if I'm doing this really often, maybe I want it to be even faster. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to say df.setIndex name in place is equal to true. So if I do this, right? Uh, let me give you a look at what the data frame looks like again. So I'll do 
the same thing I did up here, df.head10. So copy that, put that here. So when I do that, the data frame looks a little bit different, right? This 0, 1, 2, all the way to uh, whatever the number of students is, is no longer here. That's not the index anymore. I've reset the index as the name itself. And how pandas displays that is kind of drops this column label lower and says this is my index and it makes these all bold. So now the data frame is going to behave and is stored in memory a little bit differently. Um, it's it's stored such that if I have the name of any student, it's really quick, it's really easy to go ahead and look up all the information about that student because the name of that student is the index of the data frame. Now, I really want to do some videos in the future about how indexing works behind the scenes. It's not the focus of this video, but suffice it to say that it just makes lookups really, really, really quick if you have that uh, index. So now how would I write the code block um, again? So again, I, my goal is the same. I have the name of a student and I want to get their major. So I use this time it thing again. I have the chosen name, which is just some random name. And I say df.loc. So this df.loc, when you put in the argument here, it looks up the row whose index is that name. So again, if the index I'm looking up is bjq, whatever, and I put in df.loc bjq, then it's going to give me back this exact row, the first row. And then I just grab the major. Notice I don't have to say, give me the first element of the list of all the majors, because if you ask for something at a given index, it's kind of implied that there's going to be only one of them. That's how indexing works, okay? Um, and I run this, and it gives me a message here, but the point is it says that it's 440 microseconds per loop. So let's do a quick calculation down here. Uh, remember, let's see, so we have about 11.7 one, one, milliseconds, so 11.7, and there's a thousand microseconds in a millisecond, so I divide that by 440. It's about 27, about 27 times faster. Okay, so we got a very good speed up using uh, indexing in this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what happens if I want to get multiple students by name. So let's say I want to get 50 students by name, not just one. So I want, want to grab 50 at a time. So I do this k equals 50. I generate a new fresh copy of the data frame. I again have a time it block. I get 50 names to retrieve. So this sample with the argument 50 just gives me 50 names. And if I don't have any index on the data frame, remember I generate a fresh version of the data frame. So the index is back to the just numbers as it was before. How would I get all 50 of these students? I'd have to do kind of a complicated block here. I'll do my best to explain it. I'm going to say, take the data frame and give me anything where the name of the student is in these names to retrieve. So there's a lambda expression in here. Maybe there's a lot going on. But the point of this line is that I want you to give me uh, all the rows in the data frame where the name of the student is in this list of names of I, I want to retrieve, which again is 50 names. That's going to give me exactly what I want. And I ran it, did 10 loops, and it did about 124 milliseconds per loop. Now, if I set the index of the data frame, oops, uh, I think I didn't run this. So I need to do that. I need to run this, and that's happy. If I go ahead and uh, run the same block, notice the code is much cleaner. If I do have the in name as the index, I have the same names to retrieve. I just do df.loc, and df.loc just says it can take in a single name. It can also take in a list of names, and it'll give me back all of those rows. So I do that, and it says it took about 1.56 milliseconds per loop. So how much faster is that? 124 milliseconds divided by 1.56 milliseconds. So that's about 80 times faster. And the speed will only get even more impressive as we need to get more and more results, because indexing, that's the power of indexing, is that if I want to get a very large number of rows, let's say I want to get like a thousand rows from this student's data frame, it's very fast to get it if my index is the name of the student, whereas it's going to get slower and slower if I don't have the name as the index and it has to do this more um, kind of old school kind of search, which is what we're doing in this cell. So hopefully that's a good look at how indexing can help speed up um, queries on your tables. And we'll definitely do more, um, more videos on indexing in the future. Okay, so until next time.